introducing you SharePoint Stories. In this demo, I'm going to show you an SPFX web part that is rendering uh, images and content in an Instagram Stories with Reels uh, way. I thought it was a um, good idea to uh, show content that way, to engage your user with content in a, a trendy way. And well, you know, uh, stories are everywhere, so why not in SharePoint? So apologies in advance if you think it's a, it's a bad idea. Quick about me section. Uh, my name is Luis Mañez. Um, I work as a chef architect at Clear People. I'm a Microsoft MVP in office development uh, category. And well, you can find me on Twitter and ping me if you have any question. I'm a usual uh, contributor in the PMP activities. OK, um, let's see it in action, actually. So I'm jumping in my in my dev tenant. So um, let's start the web part, edit the page. Add the web part, SharePoint stories. There you are. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see all the story, republish the page. And well, um, not a great surprise. Uh, stories so you have image the author and you can uh, use the keyboard so you can go back in the stories it, it has keyboard support and also if the story has some content uh, you can see the see more button and it opens the the content of the of the story so this is how it works it's looping so once it's done it goes to the to the first story again and where is the data well what I have is a um, story SharePoint list. It's a SharePoint list for, for stories. So we have the, the image content and the author of the of the story. So let's start a new one. If we enter the title, title is not being used actually. Let's select an image. And uh, let's say something here. And the author, that one. Okay, so now we have another story in our list. So if we go back and reference, hopefully we should have a new story. Yeah. And again, if the story has uh, the content, you can see the content here, here below. So yeah, this is this is how it works. And now let's go back actually to the presentation. OK, we've already uh, seen the SharePoint list that is behind with the data. So let's dive in into the code. OK, first thing is that uh, most of the work in the UI is actually done by this component, this React Insta Stories uh, package that is available in, in NPM. And uh, also it's open source, so you can download the source code, contribute or whatever. It's available in GitHub. And here uh, in this image first, the minimum that the component requires to make it work is just an array of the different UR uh, image URLs. And you can use external images or page 64 images on here. So there's an stories uh, component with an stories property, so you just pass the array and it just it just work. As you can see here, there's a table with the different properties for the stories components, so you can define the white and the height, um, the stories, uh, obviously, if you want to loop or not, you want to allow keyboard navigation and quite a few things, the, the component is really great. And then in the stories, uh, it works just with with an image URL, but also you can use an story object, as you can see here, with different properties. So you have more control about the things that you want to, to render. The story object allows you to use a URL, a type, and it also allows to use uh, videos here in the story. The duration of that specific story, header for this story, and uh, this usually would be the user of the, of the story. And also you can specify 
the content that you want to render with these similar options and, and the styles. Also, it's not here in that table, but there's another content property that actually I'm using in, in code and allows you to provide a specific function to entirely customize the way that the story is being rendered. And this is something that we're going to see in, in a minute in, in our code. So more examples of, of the stories of Arise, so here uh, in this one, it's specifying the URL duration and also the header with the user uh, subheading and the profile image of, of that user. And another one uh, with the similar option. So you can see here how you can specify a function with the specific HTML that you want to use in the similar option. OK, in the web part, this is the usual structure of an SPFX real web part. So if we jump, yeah, uh, in the package.json, you can see the React instance stories reference. This is the component that we just saw. And in the SharePoint Stories web part, not much here, but uh, we are uh, overriding the only need of the web part. And we are, as we are configuring here, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. I'm using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to render the, the author with the user profile image, display name, and an email. And that's because the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is, is really awesome, so it's going to help us with, um, with that part of the story. And in the render of the web part, just calling the main SharePoint Stories uh, React component and setting the, the context. OK, we are now in the SharePoint Stories component. So in the component did mount, what we are doing is calling the SharePoint REST API to get the data. I'm using the render list data as a stream endpoint because it's giving me the image URL in the proper format. So I don't need to do anything else. And then when the data is back, we just map the, the list items to the story object that uh, we saw in, in a moment and update the React state with the, with the different stories. So in the render component, if the data is still loading, we are showing uh, this uh, similar component. This is coming from the Fluent UI, and this is just a placeholder, a great placeholder that is indicating that the data is, is being loaded. And once we have the data, we use the stories component from the library, the, the React Insta Stories package, sending the stories and configuring some properties for allowing keyboard navigation, the, the story interval is set by default to four seconds, and uh, we are looping the stories. Okay. And uh, in this function, we are uh, mapping the, the list item from SharePoint into a story uh, object with all the property with some of the properties that uh, we saw later uh, we saw before. So I'm getting the uh, image URL, the author ID, which is the the user ID, and the content of the story. So here uh, we are setting the the story object with the URL and the content property. And, and as I said before, the content property gives you the option to uh, use a specific custom function, as you can see here, the story renderer function. And in this case, what I'm doing is fully customizing how the story is, is rendering the page. And I'm doing so because I want to use the person component from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit to render the user profile with the display name and an email. So I don't have to be calling Graph API to do so. The, the person component is, is doing it for me and it's really easy to configure. You just need the user, the user ID and configure how you want the avatar and, and, it's, and it's done. And the rest of the function is just rendering the, the URL of the, of the image with, with, some, with some styling. As you can see here with Seymour, this is a high order component from the library as well that allows you to specify the function that you want to use if you have more content. So you see the Seymour uh, link in the, in the demo. This is because of this, this component. So if the list item has, uh, the, has filled the, the content field, 
Then I'm setting the Seymour property on the story and I'm saying, okay, I want to render the content data with this uh, div layer, the style, and, and so on. So with this function, we have full control about how we render the, the story. That's all. The sample is already available, so feel free to download, give it a try, and pin me on Twitter if there's any issue or, or any uh, question, whatever. And that's all. Thank you very much for, for having me in the call. And yeah, again, feel free to um, leave any questions or whatever. Thank you very much. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much.